recording now and um, we will proceed. So thank you very much for your attendance. So firstly, just wanted to set the scene and give a little bit of uh, background to this webinar and uh, uh, the, the, the problem we're looking to solve. Um, so firstly, so we do have a number of environmental uh, data points that we, we collect and that you're asked to report. Um, you may have been asked through the investor program or through our supply chain program, but essentially the uh, the lever is the same. Um, it's, a, it's an authority group requesting information from you as a company. Um, we, because it's a standardized request, uh, we're looking to reduce the burden. This is, is for yourselves uh, because you can provide one set of answers uh, to anyone who is asking for this information. So we see a few examples on the screen of, of some of the investors who are requesting information, but also some of the uh, who might be your customers if you're part of the supply chain project. The types of data that you may be requested to ask, depending on whether you're uh, responding to the climate change or the water questionnaire. Um, so it could be around uh, from climate change on the management side, around strategies, uh, targets, uh, and emissions reduction activities, for your risks and opportunities, whether that's regulatory, physical, or, or other. Um, and primarily what we're looking at today is, is data around the emissions reporting. So that's methodology and actual um, data for your scope one and two emissions, the electricity usage, um, any purchased other power and so on. Um, on the water side, uh, you may be asked about your uh, growth strategy um, and detrimental impacts of, of your water use. Um, there's quite a lot of questions around the risk assessment, um, both exposure and opportunities. Um, primarily, again, what we're looking at today where FCS can help is around water consumption data, discharge data, withdrawals and recycling. Uh, so it's more numerical uh, data that's, that's being requested for that sort of point. Um, but there's also questions around your corporate response, around your governance and your targets and so on. This could be uh, from the supply chain module as well. There's customer specific information, which is around allocating emissions to customers uh, or products products, uh, product level data for your goods and services, and for water that might be uh, intensity data for your products in regards to how much water is used. What we do sometimes hear from, from companies is that chasing internally for this information can be a bit of a burden for, for CSR or ESG teams who are often quite small teams within a, within a larger corporate entity. Um, we, uh, CDP, has outsourced our scoring uh, to FCS for a number of years, and they've scored you know, many thousands and thousands of responses. Um, and looking at that same issue of, of the, the, the burden of collecting data and having a, a large problem to deal with, we felt there was a need for a, a partnership um, to, to meet this need for companies. Just wanted to, to reiterate there's uh, we do have a, a strong conflict of interest policy, and so any company that is supported in a sort of consultancy basis by FCS would not be scored by them in the same year. So just to, to reassure anyone who may have concerns about that. Um, we see in those couple of speech bubbles that kind of uh, makes clear that the issue we're looking to, to deal with here is that you know collecting of submissions data from all your facilities is time consuming and can often distract uh, you from, from the role of actually trying to reduce your emissions. There may also be language barriers and so on when trying to gather this information from your, your regional offices. Um, having put that question out there, I will hand over to uh, my colleague at FCS, Greg Scandrett. I'll just make you the presenter, Greg. First of all, hang on one second, I'm just going to get your slides open. Excellent. And then I'll give you the presenter rights. Um, I'll pop myself on mute again. So uh, just to remind you, if anyone does have any questions through uh, Greg's talk, please do use the chat function and address your questions to host and presenter. Thank you very much, Greg. Over to you. Great. Thank, thanks, Daniel. Um, and again, thank you for everyone uh, joining this uh, webinar today. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, my name is Greg Scandrett, <clears throat> and I'm with uh, First Carbon Solutions. We're talking about uh, data today, and specifically the process by which we collect and capture, analyze, and process data for your CDP disclosure or really any uh, reporting scheme. 
<clears throat> so data is central to uh, to a sustainability program um, uh, that is that's sort of if you will self evident uh, whether it be uh, scope to purchase power data from your existing ERP system, whether it be fuel usage information from a production system, um, or scope three emissions, uh, sorry, scope three data from, for instance, your supply chain or an LTA analysis. So data is central, but it's affected by a number of things. Um, and, and SCS is a process to take on uh, all the tasks necessary to identify, capture, and manage that data uh, for your CDP disclosure or any other reporting scheme. And those three terms are important, and we'll dig down, we'll, we'll, we'll drill down into each one of those, identifying, capturing, <clears throat> excuse me, and managing, um, managing that data uh, such that you can, um, you can repeat the process uh, year after year. So a little bit of information about FCS first. Um, we're headquartered, <clears throat> excuse me, we're headquartered in Irvine, California. We have about 100 employees uh, worldwide. We're part of the ADIC Innovations Group, uh, which, uh, which has about 5,000 employees on five continents. Um, <clears throat> the uh, FCS business is, is, um, has a, uh, one of the main components of their business is, is um, the environmental, social, and governance um, business practice which is really broken up into two, um, two areas. Uh, one is disclosure consulting <clears throat> that is helping companies with, uh, with their CDP disclosures, GRI disclosures, DJSI. And another is related to uh, um, consulting and providing technology solutions for resource management, energy, carbon water, um, uh, waste uh, within the fence line of the organization or within the supply chain. As Daniel mentioned, we've uh, we've scored <clears throat> we've scored uh, over 5,000 sorry over 15,000 CDP disclosures um, to date, and we've conducted about a thousand, uh, almost a thousand performance review calls uh, with customers. But really, at our core, um, we are a process and technology company, um, and then we inject uh, what we call sub relevant subject matter expertise into the particular markets. Um, so we bring these three focus together, these three elements together, and I'm going to speak about each of these three elements uh, with respect to data. So this slide really represents, <clears throat> excuse me, represents the problem statement um, associated with the sustainability officer. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in the center uh, is the sustainability professional, the CSR team, and around that, uh, around that individual, or that team are different data sources, whether it be uh, energy feeds from an existing ERP system, whether it be facility data, um, it could be production data, fuel consumption data, uh, paper invoices, actual bills in, in paper form, um, surveys of the supply chain, data that sits, for instance, in, in finance or procurement or HR systems, um, online bill payment systems, uh, cloud-based systems, and then uh, everybody has uh, spreadsheets of some, of some form or fashion uh, that need to get uh, into a system. So the, we have a number of sources of data, and behind those sources of data are um, departments and, and people that then support those sources. So the, the challenge for the sustainability professional, the CSR team, is to identify what sources of data uh, they should collect that information from, what the quality of the data is, and actually going out and, and, and obtaining it and transforming it in whatever format that they find that in back into a system that they can actually take, um, take advantage of or make use of. So our solution is, um, is essentially this slide in, in very high level. And what we heard from our customers was, um, we want a, a no-hassle, standardized, and streamlined process to both collect my data, analyze it, and then report it to whatever reporting scheme that, um, that I wish to report to. And the solution really has these sort of four bubbles at the bottom. Um, data collection and entry go together, although they're very, very different. Uh, data collection is the process by which you go to uh, the data source and actually collect that data. So maybe very close to um, the um, very close to the sustainability uh, professional. That is a corporate system um, that they can have access to, for instance, with uh, ERP um, software technology. But some may be very. Uh, very, at a, a great distance or disparate data sources, both geographically and organizationally from, from them. Um, the process of data entry is really about converting that data um, and analyzing the quality of that data and then converting it into a system that they can take advantage of, basically a, a repository um, that they can then act on. The software 
is the component of that technology, a repository or system of record for your sustainability data moving forward. And then the analyst support really are the bookends to that process. So on the front end, analyst support or subject matter expertise um, really identifies where are the data sources, uh, what's the quality of the data, um, how much data, what's the granularity, et cetera. And at the end of the process, um, what is the level of transparency that we want to, the organization wants to report? Um, we collect maybe a lot of data, but we ne don't necessarily want to report all of that data, for example. So we've uh, distilled this down into, into essentially this graphic, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill down into each one of these different dimensions. We have the sustainability, CDP expertise on one dimension, uh, data capture and processing on another, and then software automation or software and technology uh, as a third dimension. And I'm gonna drill down into each one of these and provide some, provide some insight into how each of these three dimensions um, can improve uh, the process of actually collecting and capturing that data. So under the dimension of um, subject matter expertise, uh, at the top, uh, as I mentioned, the subject matter experts can, can help identify where to get the data um, and, and what data to collect. So it's really a, a sort of where and what question um, in the front end of the process. And <clears throat> they can identify um, the quality of the data necessary to support reporting requirements. <clears throat> The next step or the next process, the next um, uh, element for subject matter experts uh, in, this, uh, in this workflow is to identify the analysis that needs to occur um, as the data comes into, for instance, the software application. What, what uh, essentially, what calculations, what methodologies by which we then roll up or aggregate or transform that data necessarily for, for reporting requirements. And then lastly is uh, sort of, if you will, on the reporting of the output side um, is to uh, identify the appropriate level of transparency for, um, for that data. How much data are we gonna release? What's the, what's the information? How, how are we going to um, compare this particular data with maybe certain uh, data that we don't wanna release, production information, for instance, uh, as an example? And then how can we repurpose that data? <clears throat> that is, if we collect uh, information, how can we repurpose it for um, for, for not only CDP, but for other reporting schemes or other stakeholders, um, both internal to the organization as well as, as, well as outside. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> the next dimension uh, is the software and technology. And I have two slides on this. Um, <clears throat> I'll start with software. And, and, and uh, FCS has a software application uh, uh, entitled the Sustainability Workbench in which we can collect the sustainability metrics from the organization or outside the organization and then manage those metrics in a way that support your reporting requirements. So for example, we can create a certainly actionable outputs of help you with your sustainability, uh, sorry, help you with your CDP disclosure as well as your sustainability reporting. Uh, we can manage uh, updates to calculation uh, methods and methodologies and factors uh, as a function of time. Uh, manage change to business. Uh, no business ever ever stays uh, constant. There's always uh, acquisitions and divestitures and, and changes in process that need to be managed and managing those within the software that can provide, and, and this is an important point, provide a system of record uh, as a function of time to show what happened, for instance, last year and the year before versus what happened this year. Setting baselines um, and then updating those baselines. So setting a baseline for a particular year and comparing my year's results as a function of time. Um, uh, certainly within the software, as well as updating those baselines based upon changes in my business. <clears throat> and then uh, lastly, and this is a good segue to the next slide, is the ability to integrate uh, to data sources <clears throat> and pull data from various data sources in electronic format directly into, uh, into the software. So those, those could be, for instance, ERP systems, uh, SAP is an example, uh, or production systems. Um, um, they could also be cloud-based systems. <clears throat> so here's an, <clears throat> an example, a screenshot of uh, the sustainability workbench dashboard. Um, uh, we have, uh, and I won't go into the details uh, of, the, of the application, but essentially we can input metrics, uh, do calculations, display the information on dashboards and, and print reports, um, and help you um, manage and forecast 
uh, your sustainability metrics and the changes to both either the um, either the re reporting changes and or changes to your business as a function of time. So these, this is an example of three, what I call three different types of data, and I'll try to provide some examples of, of what I mean by different types. Um, but on the top, we have uh, very low touch, if not no touch uh, data. That is data that's in electronic form that's well structured, that sits, for instance, say within, um, within it could be an ERP system, it, it could be a system that, that has an exposed connector that we can, we can uh, capture that data. Um, uh, another example is um, is with uh, we've got a partnership with a firm that that has uh, relationships with uh, actually not 1,800 but now 2,400 utilities globally to capture um, really scope two, but um, uh, purchase power. Uh, they also have water and and waste data, and they've taken that semi-structured data on monthly bills, say a monthly electric bill and they can convert that electronically to structured data that sits within a database. Um, so if you have, um, if you've used, um, if you have purchase power, which most everybody does, um, and have, and they have those utilities as partners, we can connect to that data source, cloud-based data source, and actually pull that data in on a monthly basis and make use of that within Sustainability Workbench. The second, um, the second uh, type of data is uh, what I call sort of moderate touch. <clears throat> and um, an example of this could be a spreadsheet, um, the data that exists within a within electronic form, but maybe some manipulation needs to be done or n it might need to be uploaded manually or uploaded uh, in the system. That is, somebody needs to actually physically upload the data to the system. Another example is if we have actually a paper copy of data, um, a bill is an example, but uh, it could be uh, fuel consumption. It could be uh, output from a from a strip chart or something like that, and we can run that through a natural language process engine to convert that data, convert that uh, semi-structured or in fact uh, non-structured data into fully structured data and, and make use of it within a database. And, that, and the, the terms of of semi-structured and non-structured are really text, converting that text into um, into actual data that I can. I can put inside a database and put a row inside a database. Um, and then lastly <clears throat> is really the high-touch data. And this is really reserved often for hard-to-get data. Um, and it could, um, it could be, for example, it could be data at a particular facility. Um, it could be data geographically uh, at a distance from, for instance, your, your corporate office. Um, it could be just difficult to get because of the organization um, you're collecting data, for instance, from um, from an organization that that or from a facility that you own, but that you, for instance, don't operate, um, or from a uh, from um, you have a, a piece of property that you lease and you're collecting data from from your leasees. So this is often uh, we reserve this type of data. We reserve this uh, this uh, uh, category really for our BPO process and our business process uh, outsourcing group in which we'll effectively put a person on or a group on collecting that data on a, on a, uh, on a systematic basis on some type of granularity, usually monthly, but it doesn't necessarily have to, it could be weekly, um, could be quarterly, could be annual. And uh, we'll go out and chase that data down. We'll bring it into the process. We'll evaluate the quality of that data. Um, we will uh, run some tests on it, and then we'll convert it into a form that's, that's structured, and we can drop that into Sustainability Workbench. Now, throughout all of this, our, our customers have really said to us, uh, um, Greg, what I want is a process by which you can collect the electronic data, low touch, and even some of the, some of the um, sort of more moderate touch, um, and focus on the high touch, but I, I want all the data to be in, at, uh, in a timely manner and at a certain quality, and really, once it gets into the system, I just want the system to work. That's sort of, if you will, the no-hassle process of this of this solution is that um, I don't want a, I don't want a 90% or an 85% solution. I want a 100% solution. Um, that is, I, I might be able to get you know 80% of my data electronically, but the last 20% is is really difficult. Can you help me with that? And once the data is in Sustainability Workbench, then it, it looks uh, essentially like any other data, uh, and we make sure it's uh, it's of a quality uh, that matches the customer's needs. So what types of data are we talking about? Um, and, and this is just an example uh, uh, on the slide. Certainly, um, scope one, uh, 
fuel combustion, your, your direct combustion um, metrics, scope two, purchase power, electricity, steam, heat, et cetera, all of the, all of the scope three, the 15 scope three metrics, um, um, uh, as, well as, as well as any other data source. So it could be uh, business metrics that you want to normalize the data by, uh, production, for instance, square footage. Um, as an example, but maybe anything else that you want to track. You want to normalize your carbon emissions by that metric, but you may want to do a correlation between production and your, um, and your, your current water usage or your current waste consumption or your current energy usage. And then certainly the performance and offset uh, programs. If you have um, energy uh, efficiency programs or carbon offset programs, we can manage that data also and bring that data in to, um, to match that up against your current carbon or energy or water. Um, uh, program, but these are these, all these metrics are managed within a system that that so, sort of is underscored by the fact that there are changes in both calculation methodology um, as well as changes in your business. So calculation methodology is changing, factors are changing as well as as well as um, you're making acquisitions and you're and you're divesting assets um, and you're changing processes. So this slide sort of, sort of summarizes, if you will, those three dimensions. Um, it's about using technology and process and subject matter expertise. So the subject matter expertise, the subject matter experts really focus on, on the beginning of the process and the end of the process. What data do we collect? What's the quality metric? What's the quality parameter by which uh, we want to strive for? What's the granularity? What's the frequency of that data? Um, and then uh, from a technology perspective, uh, how do we how do we standardize that that data? What what you know, to measure are are we are we looking for that data in, for instance, to drive really to drive um, recurring efficiency. So next year's reporting season is easier and more cost effective than the previous year. That's the goal of technology and 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 uh, and automated automation and software is to drive, if you will, drive down that that cost curve such that your um, your overall program is becoming cheaper to operate. And then uh, lastly is having a process to both capture that data, really to ensure the highest level of quality and integrity, uh, which are slightly different. Quality being the, 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 the measure of whether that data actually reflects reality and integrity um, is whether or not it's, it's repeatable. That is, if I query that data source again, will I actually get the, get the same value? So those three elements or those three dimensions sort of act in or definitely act in, um, uh, act together to support the uh, program's objectives. So this is an example of uh, three different companies, very different companies, that um, have um, purchased different services and different uh, products from FCS in really support of of, this, of similar objectives or similar types of or similar types of uh, programs, so uh, uh, the, each of these three organizations have about the same number of facilities. Generally, they process about the same number of utility bills per year. Um, the the metrics that they're collecting, the data that they're collecting, are somewhat different, um, uh, but they've purchased basically very different uh, very different solutions or very different components rather from FCS. Uh, almost all. Uh, have collect have uh, have opted for BPO services that 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 if you will that uh, high touch going out and actually collecting data on my behalf and cleansing that and bringing it into a system. Um, two of which have uh, opted for sustainability expertise, and then uh, one has um, opted for um, software solutions and technology. And really, what it comes down to is 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 what what are the objectives of your program? What are the objectives really? Specifically about the data collection and capture process that you want to improve. Is it um, is it is it that hard to get data? Is the is that what's is that what's causing you some frustration? Um, is it some expertise around a particular um, particular reporting requirement? Is it something within, for instance, Scope Three that that um, you need to uh, you need to tackle? Or is it really managing data in a in a in a systematic and automated way um, to create a, a system of record? Uh, for your sustainability program moving forward. So, um, so with that, what what do we generally look for uh, in terms of scoping and engagement and, and identifying um, uh, really a cost for uh, a cost for a project? 
and 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 essentially above all of these are really the objectives uh, the objectives that you want to try um, to try to achieve uh, that is what are the objectives for going after uh, uh, improving data is it for example is it extending the boundary of the um, of your program is it changes in process um, is it uh, augmentation of your existing staff um, so so some of the things that we look for are certainly the objectives what are you trying to achieve with um, with improving the quality of the data coming into the system um, but it's also sort of what what are the data elements you're trying to capture where are they uh, both geographically as well as organizationally within the company that is how far away from um, how far away from your sustainability program do they exist uh, are they are they spread across the globe uh, are they are they at the edges of the organization or are they generally fairly close do they sit within an ERP system for instance that we can get access to um, what are the number of facilities and types of users uh, that um, that are part of the that are part of the solution and then what are the reporting requirements um, it, are they are they you know sort of if you will basic and, and out of the box um, or are they more custom and, and very specific and then uh, are there any additional consulting services that you'd would want in terms of um, CDP performance improvement, but also anything in terms of your scope one, scope two, or scope three um, calculation methodologies. And uh, that's it. My contact information is there. Daniel, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. Great. Thank you very much, Greg. That's fantastic. Um, I'll just go to this last slide here. So um, we have a little bit of time for some Q&A. Um, so we've had a couple of questions in. I'll just give a couple of moments while I just ask these first uh, two questions. If anyone does have any uh, further questions to ask, please use the, the chat function uh, and address it to host and presenter, um, and we'll answer those. But yeah, the, um, the first question uh, is, <laughs> probably the, the sort of the boldest is you know uh, someone has asked how much does it cost is is there any way you can give a sort of indicative range um, so that's uh, probably a key one you, you get asked yep. all the time yeah it, it, it's it's tough to it's tough to give a cost um, without knowing a lot uh, with really without knowing really much about the the, the type of data and, and where it's located and the and the objectives um, so they they there's there's a, a pretty significant increase uh, change rather a difference between sort of the high and low um, it's very difficult to identify um, where the cost would sit but it it, it if, for instance we could have a a, um, a fairly uh, complex organization um, uh, many facilities uh, geographically dispersed um, that uh, have their data really well centralized and the cost is actually relatively low versus a smaller organization that's uh, or not necessarily even smaller but a a less complex organization say for instance based um, all in one particular region um, that has their uh, data uh, dispersed to their facilities that might be actually quite quite a, quite a lot more challenging to uh, to collect so it's really that's a really difficult uh, question to answer but with with a, a little bit of dialogue um, we can we can hone in on that fairly quickly and and be able to answer that. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, we've had a question. So um, would a typical outsourcing engagement be an ongoing um, an ongoing one or uh, a, oops, sorry, this jumped off the screen um, or a one time affair during the year during reporting season? So yeah, yep. is it is it a, a one off or an ongoing thing? Yeah, um, could be both. Uh, we've we've done both. Um, we've done um, one-off in terms of one-off, not only w not only right before reporting season, but also just one-off um, in general. Basically, get the company started with a backlog of data. Uh, we've we've done and we do uh, just around reporting season, and then we do an ongoing an ongoing engagement uh, every every month. Um, we get, uh, for instance, uh, invoice and it gets posted up, and um, and we'll process that. Uh, Clients that process that do a QA check and and post that in. So it's really um, it's really any any of those uh, any of those uh, approaches would work. Just depends on the client requirements. Exactly. 
So, um, okay, so another one. Um, what is the smallest size organization that FCS has uh, got using the, the Workbench software? Um, that's a good question. I, I think the smallest is um, probably just a couple of facilities. Uh, it's, it's very cost effective um, in terms of managing that, managing that data. Um, it's um, it can be um, it can be uh, just a, a few facilities, um, and it's really the, the, the pricing for workbenches is is, um, is uh, structured such that um, there's really no uh, there's really no uh, large upfront cost. It's 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 based really on a per facility or per user um, pricing model. So the um, the cost can be very effective for smaller customers, um, and it can be as it as it scales. There we get into sort of more enterprise pricing, so it can be cost effective for larger customers also. Um, but there's no um, there's no really smallest size. Uh, but I but if um, if I uh, from my memory, I think it's uh, probably uh, about a couple of facilities is is generally our smallest customer. Great. Okay. Um, another one is. Um, and this may be a similar answer to the, the cost sort of question, but um, what would be an estimate of time saved in CDP reporting um, from companies where they've implemented your services? Um, you may, whether you could do that specifically for CDP or, or for wider reporting as well, but yeah, a time time savings. That's a good, that's a good question. It's very related to cost, um, but that's a good question because uh, again, it depends on the complexity of of the data. But I'll I'll give you sort of a uh, I'll give you sort of a percentage if I can if I can do this a very rough. So um, if it, for instance, if it took a certain period of time to collect that information, um, we can we can generally um, improve upon the time necessary to report to CDP by um, by probably 25 to 50 percent. Um, Generally speaking, um, those are and, and maybe maybe a, a little bit broader range than that. But generally speaking, we can um, once we have the system in place. That is, once we have a process in place to actually go out and collect that data, and uh, and apply um, apply a process for data quality um, on the data on a systematic or an ongoing basis, we can um, we can greatly improve not only the level of touch on the data. But also the speed to which you can um, you can produce uh, output out of the system. Great, thank you. Um, okay, the next one. I'm scrolling down. Um, do many of your customers use the software for environmental compliance, uh, specifically in the U.S.? Um, we do have a number of customers using it for environmental compliance. Um, so, uh, f for instance, for um, like Part 98 compliance for EPA, um, uh, traditional greenhouse gas reporting. Um, we um, so we do definitely have uh, customers using it for that in a variety of different industries: durable goods, oil and gas, uh, etc. Uh, in addition to uh, more traditional sustainability metrics tracking. Great. Um, and a um, question from actually the same person. Are there customized reports and dashboards available besides the reports just needed for CDP? Um, so, for example, uh, reports for uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index or other internal reports? Um, yeah. Yeah, let me take those in turn. So, are there other reports and dashboards that um, that are available in addition to uh, CDP or, or or DJSI? Absolutely. And in fact, one of the things I didn't touch on is is we have a, if you will, a a um, uh, off the shelf dashboard um, functionality within the application. But we've layered on uh, business intelligence tools, um, namely ClickSense, onto the application. To provide uh, really rich uh, intelligence, really rich uh, visualizations to the application, so you can really develop any <clears throat> any type of chart or any type of dashboard that you'd want uh, going forward. Um, and in terms of, uh, and then and then they could be tabular reports. Uh, you could dump that data basically to a table uh, within the within the same ClickSense and output that, save it and output that um, to um, 
to hard copy or to a spreadsheet or how or whatever you want to uh, report that out. So there's there's some very rich visual <coughs> excuse me visualizations uh, that we can um, that we have within the application. Um, so we're not certainly are not bound by a certain set of standard reports or a certain set of canned reports, um, uh, but we do have canned reports that support or or, or standard reports that support um, the report different reporting schemes. Right. Okay. And I've got one question about um, sort of for the from the uh, the, um, the the stronger touch there at the outsourcing element. So, if you uh, a couple of questions, different people, but sort of related. So, um, can you collect from uh, Asian facilities ac across Asia? And the second question was uh, around if you've got multiple locations, none of which would deal with English language. Um, how is that is that manageable for you guys? It is so. So both of those, um, essentially both of those, uh, uh, we can we can manage. We have customers uh, that have Asian facilities um, that uh, uh, not only have Asian facilities, but uh, but um, their facility um, facility personnel do not speak English. So we um, actually have personnel that speak in their native language. We don't translate. Um, so we can we can uh, collect that information and and. Um, Interact and communicate with the facility, for instance, in their language, and and have a um, uh, uh, deal with, for instance, any data quality issues that may exist. Um, so, sort of in summary, we 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 definitely have uh, we have customers that have facilities within Asia currently, and we can handle the uh, and manage um, uh, the fact that facilities don't have or don't use uh, English as their um, as their native language. Great, thank you. Um, and there's a question, there's one more for me, um, which is if, if FCS is providing consultancy and data management services, who then does the CDP scoring for that company? Um, so yeah, happy to, to take that one. Um, essentially, we have about, uh, probably about 18 different scoring partners that we use uh, globally. Um, FCS do the, the majority of that work, um, but we do have a number of other um, accredited scoring partners who maybe just do the scoring in, in one particular region, whether it's Japan or Brazil or um, wherever it might be. Uh, so we would just take the, um, put that score for, for uh, SES as part of their scoring uh, contract, do uh, declare anyone they have a, a working on consultancy services with. We then just arrange with one of our other scoring partners who've been through exactly the same training um, to then follow up and, and do the scoring for that other company. So hopefully that answers that one. Um, just scroll down. So I think I'll make this the last one, unless there's any others. Um, so last chance to get it in. Um, so last question around: um, if there's more complex emission sources, uh, such as transportation or sold products, where there's no primary data available. Um, how would you go about sort of working, working on getting those into a into a into a, a, a dashboard or something? I, I guess that might be the sort of one that would come out of a, an actual in-depth conversation with a with a potential client to to look at the requirements in more detail. But I'll I'll, I'll put it up to you anyway, just because it's it's been yeah. chatted. No, that's that's exactly right, Daniel. I th I think we'd need to have a, a quick conversation on on exactly the parameters around that um, around that particular data and what you're trying to achieve. Um, we would probably sit down with one of our CDP experts and, and uh, um, or sustainability experts and um, uh, and have a quick conversation about um, about that about that data in terms of um, in terms of the ability or not only the objectives but the ability to then either collect or estimate the data necessary for uh, calculations for reporting. Great, thank you. Um, Okay, so I think that's the last of the questions. Um, so thank you very much for your attention this afternoon. Thank you, Greg, for a, a great presentation. Hopefully that's been, of, I think, judging from the, the number of questions, that certainly has been of interest to, to a number of people. Um, what we'll do, the follow-up steps, is we will be sending out the slides and this recording, so you'll have that as a, as a reference if you want to share it with your colleagues or discuss a bit further. Um, certainly, I would recommend if you are interested in um, taking this forward and, and getting a sense of how much it will, uh, you know, both cost you in terms of, of outlay, but also save you in terms of uh, time in, this, in the short term and, and, again, money in the longer term. 
on saving that time, I'd recommend that you just set up an appointment with, with Greg or his colleagues and, and talk through your requirements and they can get you a, an estimate pretty quickly. Um, so with that, I'll say thank you very much for your time and yeah, we'll, we'll be sending out that follow-up in the next uh, day or so. So thank you very much and in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to, to just email in to, to CDP. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.